Would you, could you use your image if you knew that millions of people would die by what you were selling? <laughs> so the, Mar the Marlboro Man, Marcus Conti reporting, the Marlboro Man, you remember the guy, the, the uh, distinguished cowboy, the handsome cowboy with the white hat and red shirt? Remember that guy that uh, he, he convinced a whole population to smoke, smoke Marlboro? Right? The Marlboro Man is dead, right? The imagery. Would you do it if you had the chance? And would you do it if you were already wealthy as the Marlboro Man was? So let's take a look at the life and times of the Marlboro Man, right? A, uh, an American icon, right? An American icon, right? We think of... We think of Marlboro Red, the pack of Marlboro Red, and the, we had our rock stars roll the pack of cigarettes in their sleeve, you know, and uh, feeling good about the, about the smoke. At one point, they said it was good for you, made you feel manly. It was <laughs> before they took, they knew all along that it was uh, killing people. So let's look at two spins. We'll take a, a, a stroll down Marlboro memory lane. Uh, and and see the irony, uh, uh, of course, is that the Marlboro Man never smoked. <laughs> uh, he never smoked. He just promoted the smoke. I think that's why the story is so fascinating. So the, the Marlboro Man, just for a point of note, is that the Marlboro Man himself, this guy, this handsome man, smoking, I guess, the fake cigarette. If you look, actually, the lighter is a fake flame. <laughs> so it's not even. It's not even a real photograph of him lighting up, right? But it's got, it's got the cigarette in his mouth. He's a rancher. And uh, he died. So uh, original Marlboro man Bob Norris died at 90, likely because he never actually smoked. Ah, never smoked, right? But he promoted it. And he, he how many people, how many millions of people died of lung cancer due to cigarettes, right? Is he to blame? Should we blame the Marlboro man? Should we blame the actor who is the Marlboro Man for Philip Morris's promotion of cigarettes that killed millions of people through lung cancer over the years? Mm, I don't know. The original Marlboro Man died this week at his Colorado Springs ranch. We'll look at two spins. This is the New York Post, a little right, and then we'll look at the more conservative, what the uh, New York Times. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> They've actually switched roles. You have to think of the the... New York Times used to be the out there liberal uh, voice of the people. Now it's the conservative crap, right? It's just the status quo. So the original Marlboro Man died this week at his uh, Colorado ranch at the ripe old age of 90 because he never smoked. Bob Norris was an actor, rancher, and dad who played the role of, of a smoking cowboy on billboards, TV, and the pages of magazines for 12 years. Ad executives... Uh, First tracked the rugged uh, Colorado native down at his 63,000-acre T-Cross ranch in Pablo after seeking, uh, seeing a photo of him in a newspaper alongside of pal John Wayne. His son Bobby uh, told uh, the Colorado Springs radio station. So his pals with, uh, has some influential friends there. His pals with John Wayne. They walked uh, out to their car. These, they, they walked out of their cars, these guys in their pinstripe suits, and they walked up to my dad and said, how would you like to make it, uh, how would you like to be in commercials for Marlboro cigarettes? The son told the station. He said, well, I'm kind of busy right now. Why don't you come back uh, next week, and if you're serious, we'll talk. They came back the next week. Norris quit the business suddenly after realizing he was setting a bad example for his daughter's uh, his two daughters and two sons. Quote, he also told us kids, I don't ever want to see you smoking. No one, uh, no one of us, uh, fine. So one of us finally asked, if you don't want us smoking, why are you doing cigarette commercials? Bobby said. The same day, Norris called up Phyllis, Philip Morris, uh, which owned Marlboro brand, and he quit. Ah, what a stand-up guy, right? After all those years, right? <laughs> it's interesting. It's it's interesting because if you own 163, how many thousand acres? How many acres of fucking land does this guy have? 63,000 acres of land. That's like a, that's like the size of Manhattan. He's got all that land, and he's still selling cigarettes, right? Greed, right? Maybe I don't know. So um, 
Despite his role in the popular tobacco advertising campaign for more than a decade, Mr. Norris was never a smoker. All right. So Robert Norris, a rancher known for his role as the Marlboro Man in television commercials for the cigarette brand, died on Sunday at Pike's Peaks Peak Pike's Peak Hospice. Ah, so he died in hospice. He died in a uh, in a facility. Uh, his death was announced in an obituary on his T Cross Ranch website. Mr. Norris, uh, just see what else we can find out. Mr. Norris portrayed in the Marlboro advertising. Uh, with cigarettes in his mouth and hand, was the face of Marlboro brand for more than a decade. He was, he was first approached on his ranch after the executive spotted him in a photo with John Wayne. All right, so we knew that. The Marlboro man first appeared in 1955 after the cigarette and tobacco manufacturer Philip Morris and the advertising agency Leo Burnett Worldwide revamped the cigarette brand. Mr. Norris was one of several men who depicted the Marlboro man uh, during the decades-long campaign. Marlboro was founded as a woman's cigarette brand, a women's cigarette brand, before it was repositioned as a masculine product with a rugged cowboy feel and personality. It's all advertising, right? It's all just like charlatan shit, right? The guy never smoked, right? And, and Philip Morris knew all along that they were killing people. Of course they did, right? It says it in here. Professor Scott Ellsworth, a lecturer at the University of Michigan, a former oral, oral historian, it's an oral historian, at the Smithsonian Institute, conducted nearly 60 interviews with former Marlboro men, uh, Philip Morris executive, Philip Morris executives, and Leo Bennett, personal, Burnett, personal, uh, over two years, to examine Marlboro's marketing strategy. I messed that up. So he says, so guy, the uh, the head historian, <laughs> interviewed these guys. And what did he find out? The Marlboro Man campaign is easily one of the most successful advertising campaigns of all time. Wow. It absolutely conquered the world. The ad campaign helped Marlboro become the world's leading cigarette brand in 1972, where it, was, uh, re- where it has remained since. More than 43% of all cigarettes bought in the United States last year. We're Marlboro, according to Forbes. Wow. Barry Vacker, an associate professor of critical media studies at Temple University, said Marlboro Man came during a turbulent period of the Cold War, the civil rights and women's rights movements, and the emergence of rock and roll. It really was. It really was a rock and roll cigarette, right? Well, I guess before that was uh, filterless I had even worse, right? The filterless, I guess Marlboro's pretty bad, but before that it was Lucky Strikes and Paul Mall. I had no filter, just you and your tobacco, kind of like uh, you and your marijuana. The Marlboro man stood as an iconic symbol, an individual in control of his destiny. He was a, he was a resurgent figure at the height of our fear of nuclear annihilation and a conservative counter to changing values. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. He was a reinsurging figure at the height of the nuclear annihilation. That's what are you talking about. He said the campaign's cultural significance could not be matched. There does not seem to be a modern-day equivalent to the cowboy. Hmm. Is there a modern equivalent? That's something to think about. Let me think about that. Mr. Norris thought never... A sm- Mr. Norris, though never a smoker, was featured as the Marlboro Man in commercials that ran for 14 years in the United States and Europe. He eventually abandoned the campaign because he felt he was setting a bad example for his children, according to the ranch website. In 1964, the Surgeon General declared smoking a hazard, a health hazard, and the tobacco industry faced increased regulations. Philip Morris, the nation's largest cigarette maker, acknowledged decades later that Smoking causes lung cancer after increasing pressure from lawsuits, regulators, and Congress. A federal ban on television and radio advertisements for cigarettes took effect in 1971, and the Marlboro Man campaign, among others, was discontinued in the late uh, 1990s in the United States as part of a sweeping settlement of litigation brought by nearly all the states against the major tobacco companies. Mr. Norris, born in Chicago... April 10, 1929, into a family of mostly financiers and lawyers, 
he was rich. He grew up in St. Uh, Charles, Illinois, about 40 miles west of Chicago, and attended the University of Kentucky where he played football. Uh, so he played football. The rest is kind of boring. He was so rich, he, he, he uh, bought a couple of elephants from Africa to live on his ranch. Bought uh, Zimbabwe elephants, five Zimbabwe elephants. Uh, and lived on his ranch. So Marcus Conti reporting, what the hell, what kind of story is this, right? It's a story of American icon, right? Pumping shit down. See, it's all advertising, right? It doesn't matter. We're getting, what is the, what is the cultural, I guess the, the, the point is, what is the cultural of equivalent today of the Marlboro man of yesterday? I, I can't, nothing really comes to mind, but there's so many things that are, I would think, what, I guess what pops into mind is, our modern-day politicians that sell us lies and bullshit, right, that, that say one thing and then turn around and do the exact opposite once they're elected, right? That's kind of the equivalent, right? This guy was a... Uh, but this guy was an actor, right? Was just, I don't know. It's just a fascinating story, right? Would I do it? Would I sell... Would, if I was poor and broke and, and living on the edge of my... You know, living out in a tent city in L- L.A., like most of the fucking deadbeat actors are doing right now and someone walked over and said, yeah, we'll give you, we'll give you, uh, we'll give you 20 grand. You do this ad campaign for us. It'll get you out of the, it'll get you out of the tent, right? It'll get you in a shower, get you some meals, but you got to promote, uh, marijuana. You got to pretend that you're smoking marijuana and you, you know, and you, cause you're so fucking cool looking. You're so cool looking in your tent. Uh, and I don't smoke marijuana. Would I, would I do it? Uh, probably. I probably would, right? But if I had a lot of cash, I mean, if I was a wealthy, you know, financier and lawyer, would I do it? I don't think so. It's kind of unusual. You wonder if the Marlboro Man knew that it was causing cancer right from the get-go. That's why he didn't smoke cigarettes. Why wouldn't he smoke? What was his reason for not smoking? Or um, did he just not give a shit? (laughs) I don't know. Marcus Conti reporting on the Marlboro Man.